Welcome to Borderline Project number 15 for the Ugly Duck Challenge hosted by Corey at Desert DIY. I purchased my Ugly Duckling dresser on Facebook Marketplace for $15. The top of the dresser is for Micah, but I have a plan to deal with this. Any good paint project begins with the thorough cleaning. While I'm cleaning and removing hardware, I just want to remind everybody about the playlist in the description below. If you like these videos, then please check out that playlist because there's a lot of great content. Just a quick cut here to give this dresser a more modern look. The finish on this dresser was failing so I had to remove it before painting. The Labrador Retriever, not just a fancy name, Here's Oakley trying to give me her ball, and I don't know if you've noticed in these videos, but it happens quite often. The veneer at the bottom of this dresser was damaged, so I glued it and let it set overnight. For more details about how I fix water-damaged veneer, please check out Borderline Furniture Project Number 9. Every time I fix damaged veneer, I'm just so surprised about how easy it is to fix and how good the results come out. I purchased the handles for this project at Hobby Lobby. They were 50% off, which made them about $3 a piece. These handles are really great quality. As you can see, they're slightly larger than the original holes, so I'll have to fill and redrill. One of my drawers had some severe damage. But since I'm going for an industrial look, I don't think this will be a showstopper. While sanding and cleaning, I kept having these dark spots appear in the wood. It could be mold, maybe it's not. I'm not taking any chances. I'm going to treat this, and it's a pretty easy process. You just apply it, and then let it dry. I plan to paint the top of this dresser, so I'm going to use Fusion Ultra Grip to help the paint adhere to the Formica. The first step is to give the Formica a good scuff sand. The key to getting a good finish with this product is to apply it as evenly as possible. I once tried to apply this with a paintbrush and all I can say is, don't. What happens is, is all the brush strokes will remain and you will be unable to sand them out. Now that the mold treatment is dried, I'm going to sand these drawers with a really fine sandpaper to close the pores. I'm going to be staining this with a dark color and I don't want too much of the stain to absorb. So here's a funny story. My husband was watching project number 14 and he said, that stain it's not Jacobean, it's Jacobian. So yes, I want to make that correction now, that it is Jacobian. I said it before and I'll say it again. I am such a knucklehead. Now that the Ultra Grip is dry, I'll attempt to smooth out the surface prior to priming. I've never had anyone talk about this before, but this stuff doesn't sand easily, and it's a lot like sanding really hard rubber cement. I get excellent results using this product, as you'll see at the end, but if this is your first time using it, I would recommend doing a couple test samples first. 
it could just be me, but I think this Ultra Grip surface seems to absorb the paint and primer differently than the wood surfaces. Again, this is just an observation. I'm not quantifying it as good or bad. I'm just saying it's a little bit different. So again, I'm just going to recommend for first time users, go ahead and do a test sample so you'll know what to expect. Did I ever mention how much I love bare paint products? I had some leftover black paint and I just decided to make my own chalk paint. I used two tablespoons of calcium carbonate with one tablespoon of water per cup of paint. Of course, if you're going to use it in your paint sprayer, you'll use more water and thin it out to the right consistency. And of course, anytime you're using your sprayer, you'll want to filter your paint so you don't get clumps and clog up your paint tip. This is only my second time of using my new paint sprayer that I got from Harbor Freight, but I really love it. One of the keys to getting a smooth surface is sanding between each coat. And for the top coat, I'm using bare polyacrylic with a matte finish. I love these Hobby Lobby handles, but every time I go to use them, the screws are too long. So here's a tool that you may not be aware of. It's a wire cutter and a terminal crimper, but it can also cut screws without damaging the threads. As you can see here, I'm just threading the screw through the tool and then I'll squeeze the handle and it will cut the screw off at the desired length. And here I am installing the handle, and it's a perfect fit. Just a reminder, this is where we started. And here is my beautiful industrial swan. I want to thank Corey at Desert DIY for hosting this challenge. Please check out the playlist in the description below. We are nearing the end of Project 15. Please like and subscribe. Your comments are always welcome, and thanks for watching!